Hey, my daregiver family. That's right. You're not a caregiver. If you're with me, you're a daregiver because daregivers are those of us who take on the challenge to try new techniques because the only way you're going to succeed is if you try new techniques and they will work. They'll work if you try them, you use them properly and you keep trying. You will succeed. I'll guarantee it for you. So this is answers about Alzheimer's and this is where we answer all of your questions about Alzheimer's and all related dementias, not just Alzheimer's. So today I would like to personally invite you to subscribe to the channel. Um, I have a new goal. I've got to hit that new goal. So please subscribe. And you know what? Share one of your favorite videos with your feed in your Facebook, your LinkedIn, um, wherever you are or your email list. Spread the news because the feedback that I'm getting from this channel and from all of you, by the way, thank you for sending me your feedback. I'm getting emails. I'm getting texts. I'm getting phone calls. I'm getting you know, in, in YouTube, in the comments, Facebook, LinkedIn, TikTok, Instagram. Wait, do I get notifications in Instagram? I probably do, but I don't know how to access them, do I? Okay, I guess I better work on that. But anyway, um, literally, literally hundreds of responses every day, and I try my very best to reply. Um, but I love hearing from you, so please, please don't stop telling me. But the feedback that we're getting from all of you out there who are having successes and who are making changes and it's positive and it's helping and the techniques are working, um, kudos to you. Because you can watch videos all day long, but if you're not trying it, nothing's going to change. So the dare givers out there, you know who you are. You're the ones that are implementing. You're the ones who are trying it, doing it, and you're changing the world. You're changing the life of your person with dementia, and you're also changing your life because you're making your life one hell of a lot easier. So kudos to you. So please subscribe, share the channel, blah, 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 right? Spread the word. Tell them that you love what you're learning. Today, I'm going to discuss the different types of dementia the life expectancy, average life expectancies, some of the symptoms and some of the causes for some of these different dementias. And I think this is super important because we're finding now that, I forget the actual number, but it's it's pretty high. It's somewhere like 60, 70, 80% of people. It's a lot. Okay, it's a lot of people now who are having autopsy. Uh, they're finding that people who were diagnosed with one type of dementia really have two or three different types of dementia at the same time. So it's crucial that you know as a caregiver what the symptoms are, the different life expectancies and things like that so that you can better prepare for what's coming, right? So like hallucinations, I mean, you got to be prepared for that before the hallucination happens. So with that being said, I also want to say thank you so much to so many of you who have bought the book because it's the number one bestseller now ah, in a year. So thank you, thank you, thank you for um, buying the book, but mostly for telling me how much you love it and how much it's working. Because I mean, that's why I wrote it, right? I didn't write it to write a book. I wrote it to help people and help you. So I'm so, I'm so thankful for, I mean, every day I get emails from people saying, oh my God, th this is working. I can't believe it. It's so easy. Um, so yeah. And Dr. Sharon Bragman of uh, Chief Geriatrics, uh, she wrote the foreword. So um, pick it up if you haven't gotten it yet. There's a link below that you can pick it up. And for those of you who have purchased it, please, please, please go back to Amazon and put a review in there for me. I would really, really appreciate it. Um, compared to the number of books that I've sold, I don't have very many reviews. So, and reviews is what helps push Amazon and Google to um, recommend it more. So I would really appreciate a review for the book and your reviews actually help 
other people. They really do. So please consider that. Um, all right. So I want to talk about the different dementias, um, the lifespans, um, the symptoms, and some of the causes for some of these dementias. And we're going to cover seven or eight um, today. The first one is Alzheimer's disease. And I think the reason why Alzheimer's is usually the first one we talk about is because it is the most common of all the dementias. About 70 to 80% of people who are diagnosed with some form of dementia, they're diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease. Because sometimes we kind of confuse those two terms, Alzheimer's and dementia. They're completely different. Alzheimer's is a disease and dementia is a symptom of that disease, okay? So lots of different diseases have dementia as a symptom, vascular, frontotemporal, um, um, Creutzfeldt-Jakob disease, Parkinson's, they can all have dementia as a symptom. So I don't wanna spend a lot of time on that, but. Um, so Alzheimer's disease, the average lifespan is nine years, eight to nine years is the average lifespan, but People can have Alzheimer's and decline very rapidly, like two years, um, all the way up to 20 years. And let me tell you folks, if you're on that 20 year journey, that's a crap load of planning. And that is a huge, huge lifestyle change, right? So we need to be taking these things into consideration. This is one of the reasons why it's so important to know what the average lifespan is so that so that we can kind of gauge, listen, how long am I going to be doing this for, dealing with this for, who's going to pay for care, who's going to provide the care, um, getting final wishes in order, and coming up with a plan. So, so these things I think are really, really important to discuss. So Alzheimer's disease is caused by abnormal proteins called plaques and tangles. And what they do is they kind of, if you will, they kind of strangle or they kill or cut uh, those neurons in the brain, which means that now the brain can't send signals to other parts of the brain to help us with um, problem solving and finding words and day-to-day -day functioning because the, the neurons are actually cut, deteriorated, dead, and they can't communicate with each other because there's a gap in those neurons. So the most common, now I'm gonna talk about symptoms today as well, but I'm not gonna talk about every single symptom for every single disease, but I'm gonna talk about the main ones and the most common ones, okay? So please put, so I know you understand me, please put um, most common symptoms or most common in the chat for me so that I know you're, you're understanding that we're not going to cover, you know, all of them because it would probably take like 15 hours to do that and I have to eat. <laughs> so anyway, Alzheimer's disease, the most common symptoms, and these you probably are pretty familiar with is, you know, memory loss, particularly our short-term memory loss in the beginning. Confusion, um, problems with speech and word finding. We can have personality changes like anger and aggression, sometimes hallucinations, um, problems with our language. We can um, often lose items or think that we lost items. We can miss appointments. Um, so, and depression, especially in the earlier stages, early and middle stages, depression is pretty common. Um, in Alzheimer's disease. So that's the first one. The next one I want to talk about is uh, vascular dementia. And vascular dementia is a little bit shorter lifespan. Vascular dementia, the average lifespan is between three to five years. So we may not have as much time with our loved one if they have vascular dementia. Now, vascular dementia is caused by a reduced blood supply to a particular area of the brain that causes death. And it causes death because it cuts off the blood supply, which, which cuts off the oxygen to that part of the brain, and then those cells die. Now, 
Vascular dementia usually happens in steps, right? So if someone has now, vascular dementia can be caused from like strokes. It can be caused from cardiovascular disease. Anything that um, it can be a brain hemorrhage, um, head trauma, lots of different things. But anything that um, can cut off that blood supply to an area of the brain. So, so it happens in steps. So let's say strokes are the most common. So let's let's use that as the example. So your your normal, you have a stroke and you deteriorate. So you have specific symptoms with that stroke because it happened in one part of your brain. And then you plane off and you're the same until you have another stroke. And then you'll have more cognitive issues and then you'll plane off again. So it's not like Alzheimer's disease where it's a continuous um, decline, right? So if you can prevent the next strokes from happening, you can plane off, right? So it's really important to get a diagnosis here. So when we're talking about vascular, the symptoms for vascular can depend on where in the brain that stroke or that event or that cutoff of the oxygen happens. So it can be different for different people, but they have problems with balance, uh, difficulty concentrating usually, difficulty understanding. They also have memory loss, um, similar to Alzheimer's disease, and they also have um, disorientation. So the next one I'm gonna talk about is Lewy body dementia. And Lewy body dementia is, it's actually my favorite. It's my favorite of all the dementias. And I think that's because um, it's more challenging. And I, I love a challenge, but um, it also is riddled with behaviors, which is my specialty. So um, I think that's probably why I'm partial to Lewy body dementia. Lewy body dementia is really tough. Um, so Lewy body dementia or LBD is the average lifespan is between five to seven years. That's the average. And this is due to small deposits of proteins that appear in the nerve cells. So people with Lewy bodies, the most common um, symptoms are sleep disorders. These are really early, 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 early symptoms. Sleep disorders and hallucinations. Hallucinations that are vivid and often violent. Now, 80% of people with Lewy bodies will have hallucinations. 80%, that's a lot. So, in, so it takes an average, this is insane, it takes an average of 18 months to get a diagnosis of Lewy body dementia. And that's because of those early warning signs, because those early warning signs are usually misdiagnosed as a sleeping disorder, um, or schizophrenia. And oftentimes, if people are prescribed medications for schizophrenia, it actually makes the hallucinations worse. So Lewy bodies, it's a tough one, man. I'm telling you, it is a tough one. So not only do they have the hallucinations and the sleep disorders, and um, but they have problems with their thinking, visual perception. And this, this is the kind of stuff, man, we go deep in the course on all this kind of stuff. Difficulty forming words. They can have fainting spells. They can also um, appear like they're in a trance, like they can kind of go like almost dormant. <laughs> and, and they kind of, they turn into like this trance-like thing and it can last for minutes, hours, days weeks. It, it's very, very, very scary. Um, they can have difficulty swallowing, rigidity. Um, so Lewy bodies is a really, really tough one. The next one is FTD or frontotemporal dementia, which means it's in the frontal and temporal um, lobes of the brain. The average for FTD is 7 to 13 years. That's the average lifespan. And this is the one that Bruce Willis was diagnosed with. And I can't thank Bruce Willis's family enough for 
coming out and sharing um, their story because it is really so important. So this is when the nerve cells in the frontal and temporal lobes die and uh, the pathways connecting them are damaged and they shrink. So with FTD, this one is, I guess this is probably my second favorite one, but this one is really tough because we have a lot of problems with personality changes. Our personality changes, this hits our executive functioning and um, it, it makes us so that it's not that the person doesn't care, it's that they can't care. So they, they have a lot of problems with their speech, um, ambulating, they have issue with that. The other really interesting thing about FTD is they have a lot of um, sexual behaviors. And again, this is part of like the personality changes, the sexual inappropriateness, um, self-monitoring doesn't exist anymore because that part of the brain is under attack. They have oral fixations. They might just put things in their mouth, things that just don't even belong in your mouth. Try to eat things and just put things in their mouth. Very odd. Um, and loss of motivation. So we keep trying to motivate the poor person with FTD, but they're just not interested. Like they just, they don't care. They don't care to care. Um, so, and they also lose their inhibitions. So this, this can be a real, real tough one, especially like going out in public and having people over and, um, and trying not to take things personally. So you've got to put your suit of armor on, right? You got to put on your suit of armor and let that stuff just bounce off of that armor. The next one is Parkinson's and Parkinson's disease. I think a lot of people are pretty familiar with Parkinson's disease um, because the uh, symptoms are so visual, right? They, they have the tremors. In most cases, they have tremors, rigidity. Um, they can have hallucinations and problems with thinking and a lot of problems with um, swallowing, drooling. This can be really tough. And the bowel and um, urinary incontinence can be really, really challenging for caregivers. Um, they can start talking really really softly and their handwriting gets really tiny. That's so interesting to me. Their handwriting gets tiny. I think my mother was not diagnosed with Parkinson's and I'm almost positive she had Parkinson's after I learned about that small handwriting because her handwriting got really tiny and I was like, God, that's so, I remember thinking, God, that's so weird. Um, and um, they can freeze people with Parkinson's. They freeze up and they also, they don't tend to rotate their trunk. They don't tend to rotate. And the freezing can often happen in um, small places like bathrooms, right? So problems there. Um, but Parkinson's disease, the average lifespan is between 10 and 20 years. So this is a long process, 10 to 20 years. So, I mean, in one case, that's great because you have more time to spend with your loved one. But it also is, again, who's going to provide care? How much is this going to cost? How are you going to manage these, these are very important things. Also with Parkinson's disease, medications have to be taken on time every single time. And people with Parkinson's, they take medications multiple times a day and they have to take it within like five, 10 minutes of the dose time. Oh my God, seriously, it's, it's really important. So Parkinson's is due to a decrease in the dopamine, dopamine levels in the brain, which um, causes abnormal brain activity. And um, by the time it's diagnosed, I think, oh, I probably shouldn't say it out loud because I'm not positive. But by the time it's diagnosed, Parkinson's, the dopamine levels in the brain are almost like, they go from like this to like this. So it's already way too late by the time we figure this stuff out, which is horrible. I mean, early diagnosis is so important. Um, the next one I want to talk to you about is CTE, chronic traumatic encephalopathy. Yeah. <laughs> so I do not have an average lifespan on this one. If there are any doctors or medical professionals out there that know the answer to that, please let me know because 
God knows, I have asked and tried and nobody seems to know what the average lifespan is after diagnosis. These lifespans are after diagnosis, by the way. So CTE, that is the head trauma, which is very common for people who are in sports or professional athletes. Um, they often have CTE. So this is caused by blows to the head, um, concussions, um, and again, it caused the tau proteins that kill the brain cells. So CTE, this is a very, very sad, traumatic type of dementia. Aggression, lots of aggression, moodiness, a loss of motivation, suicidal thoughts and tendencies, impaired judgment, sexual compulsiveness, violence, drug abuse, and alcohol abuse. So CTE, man, this is, this is another really, really tough one. And I, I think we need a lot more information um, on this particular dementia. But um, the next one I want to talk about is Creutzfeldt-Jakob disease. This one is really not very common. Um, it's caused by abnormal um, infectious proteins called pyron, prion, prion, bleh, um, and they kill the brain cells. Now, this is a uh, mad cow. And back in my day, I can't remember when, but it was kind of like a big hoo-ha thing, I think over in Europe or something. Um, but this, this average lifespan is one year. Um, Kreutzfeldt-Jakob disease really just, it's like Pac-Man just eating that brain away so, so fast, so fast, very rapid deterioration. Personality changes, blurred vision, blindness, insomnia, speech problems, and really um, jerky movements with um, Kreutzfeldt-Jakob. The last one that I'm going to talk about today is alcohol-related um, dementia. And it's... Uh, Korsakoff syndrome. I always joke and go, Korsakoff, Korsakoff. It's, it's, it's my little joke. Anyway, so Korsakoff syndrome um, is alcohol related dementia. The average lifespan after diagnosis is about eight years for this one. And it's caused by alcohol, over drinking alcohol. So these people tend to be very non empathetic, so they don't care about anything. They don't care about other people. They lack focus. They can't problem solve. They're not going to be very organized. Um, they're going to have really poor judgment. Obviously, I mean, people who are drinking have poor judgment anyway, right? And they really, really lack motivation. Now, the interesting thing about Korsakoff syndrome um, is that it can be reversible or you can kind of stop it if the person stops drinking. And I have found, unfortunately, that in most cases, people don't. They don't stop drinking. And this is particularly hard for the caregiver, you know. Um, but um, that's, that's Korsakoff or alcohol-related dementia. So I wanted to, oh, I have a free gift for you. I almost forgot. I have a free gift for you. And it's actually a, um, it's a PDF that you can get on my website, answersaboutalz.org, and it has all of this information on it for you. So it has all the, um, all the dementias, the life expectancies, the causes, and the symptoms. So you can print this out on my website, answersaboutalz.org. It's completely free. Um, don't forget reviews. And if you haven't picked up the book to review it, Oh boy, you better get a copy of this. You better get this ASAP. It, it'll change your life, I swear to God. Or you can return it. I don't care. If you don't like it, send it back. I don't give a shit. Um, and I have some really big news coming up. Oh God, I'm dying to spill the beans, but I don't know when this video is going to post. So I'm, I'm going to hold off. But I have super big news. Um, I have four compact courses on my website. So, you know, if you're here... I opened up the vault of my caregiver training that I did back in the day with my um, home care agency. And I opened up my vault with some, some uh, 
courses, and I think you should take a look at them. There's four of them. One of them is bathing. Huh, yeah, who doesn't need that? And if you don't need it now, you're gonna. Um, and like communication, like how to get your words across, what not to do, what not to say, because that's where all the arguing comes from. So I forget what the other ones are, but there's four. Um, there will be more coming. And um, of course, there's the four day course. This is the end all. This course will teach you everything you need to know in one fell swoop. You will never need another training again. I'm telling you the truth, I swear to God. But you don't have to listen to me. I've got all kinds of testimonies on my website. When you go and print this out, take a look at the website, poke around, watch some of those videos of what people are saying about the course. Because, oh, and my Holly, she went right out and got a job, a new job within a week, paying her more money. I'm so proud of Holly. She's amazing. Um, so anybody can take this course. And when you take it, you'll be amazed at the success you will have, whether it's in your job or with someone you work with at home. Honest to God, four days, that's all you need. It's going to change your life and it's going to change the life of your person with dementia. And the best part is, if you don't think it's the best damn course you've ever taken, I'll give you your money back. I swear to God, I will give you your money back. So, um, there, there's absolutely nothing to lose. Plus, you get to spend four days with me personally, get to ask questions. We get to make sure that you understand absolutely everything that's going on, solve all of your problems. It's a no-brainer. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I have to tell you that I don't think there's any other course out there that offers you a money-back guarantee. And that tells me something. It tells me that they either don't believe that their course is everything that you need, or they don't think that you can actually pull it off. Hmm. But I know you can pull it off because I've had people take this course from all different levels. I've had people from 70-year-old housewife all the way up to geriatric physician and everything in between. And every single one of them has been successful and has absolutely loved it. So anyway, um, go to the website. It's called the Certified Master Dementia Strategist Course. And me. Oh my God. I'm telling you, it's freaking phenomenal. But again, I don't even want you to believe me. Go watch the video testimonies, look it up on my website, whatever. And then call me, book a call. Because I don't take everybody, by the way. I, I don't. I have kind of interview you. We have a conversation. Um, because if I don't think that your heart's really in it, you're not going to be accepted because I don't take everybody. Like, I have to make sure that I think that you're doing it for the right reasons um, or that you want to advance your career um, and that you're actually going to implement the techniques because they don't work if you don't implement them. And they're not hard. They're super easy. Oh, my God. They're so easy. <laughs> so easy. But anyway, um, call me. Let's chat. And um, I hope that wherever you are in your journey, that today you're, you're doing great and that you're having an, an amazing day. And just know that I will always, always be here for you. Always. Um, and uh, until next time, together we can.